All right, so no one with basic algebra skills should get this problem wrong. However, there is a part of the solution here that tends to confuse a lot of people, and it's going to cause a lot of you out there to make an error. So you want to be very careful. And let's take a look at the equation. We have 21 over x plus 1 is equal to 7 over 2. And what we're trying to do here is solve this equation for x. All right, now we do have a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 2, B is 3, C is 5, and D is 41 over 7. Okay, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I want to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is the problem. We have an equation. And uh, there is a particular name to these type of equations in algebra. But don't worry about it. Here, again, what we're trying to do is solve this equation for x. And let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer here is x is equal to 5. So the right answer is c. OK, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being able to solve a basic proportion in algebra. Now, uh, this equation is a proportion, as I just said, but even if you didn't know uh, what type of equation this is, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I just uh, saw the equation. I knew how to solve it. I didn't even know uh, it is a, or is a proportion. Well, this is an important part of this little uh, video that I'm going to try to communicate, that when you see an equation where you have one fraction equal to another fraction, you want to identify that as a proportion. But we're going to get into all this in just one second. And if you didn't get this right, no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and walk through exactly how to solve this problem. And I'm going to highlight a very common error here in just one second. But let's suppose you come across this problem on a test or an exam. If you are a math student, what can you do to absolutely guarantee that you're going to select the right answer? Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I just don't know how to solve this problem. Should I just guess? Well, you can do one better with this particular problem because instead of guessing what these are right here, you have a multiple choice question. One of these is the correct solution to this equation. Now, we know that the answer is 5, and how can we um, kind of verify that? Well, what you can do is simply plug in these uh uh, possible solutions until you figure out the one that is correct. So let's plug in a 5 here and see what happens. So what we're going to have is 21 over 5 plus 1 is what? Well, that's 6. And this fraction here, we can reduce, right? So 7 goes into, or 3 goes into 21 is 7, and 3 goes into 6, 2. So 21 over 6 is equivalent to the fraction 7 halves. So that's this side of the equation. And 7 halves is equal to 7 halves. So a number that produces a, situ a situation where the left is equal to the right, well, that's what we call a solution. So no one, um, as I indicated, with basic algebra skills should get this problem wrong. Even if you don't know how to solve it directly, what you can do is simply plug in these values until you get the right answer. Now, some of you might have said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this was my answer, but I didn't plug it in, but uh, this is what I selected, and I got this wrong. Well, this answer here, 41 over 7, is the result of a very common error. I'm going to get to this in just one second, but let's just talk about proportions, right? So I bring this up, uh, or I brought this up, and let me bring it up again. Now, even if you didn't recognize uh, this equation as a proportion, you really want to. Okay, now what is a proportion? Well, we know that word, right? People kind of say, well, something's proportional to something else. But technically, from a mathematical standpoint, what does it mean? Well, in kind of its most simplest terms, a proportion 
is one fraction equal to another fraction. And here is a simple example. So if I have the fraction one half, well, what's another fraction that's equal to one half in value? So we can have any uh, fraction five over 10, but here I have four over eight. So you wanna recognize or be on the lookout in algebra when you have one equation, or sorry, one fraction in an equation and that's equal to another fraction. And these fractions can have variables in them. Well, that by definition is a proportion. Now, uh, typically you study proportions when you study uh, topics uh, like rates and ratios. Okay, rates and ratios, these um, are themselves fractions. So a proportion is also uh, defined as two equal rates or ratios, but just to keep things nice and simple here, uh, basically you have two equal fractions. Now let's take a look at our problem here. Uh, now that we know something about proportions, we're like, all right, well, I have one fraction and that's equal to another fraction. Now you know it's one fraction because it's only one fraction bar, right? So there's a fraction bar here and there's a fraction bar uh, here. So you have one fraction, it's equal to another fraction. So uh, when we have a proportion, i.e. two equal fractions, uh, the, it's very easy to solve, the th solve these uh, things because we have this lovely property right here, and that's called the cross product. All right, so let me say this here. As a matter of fact, I'll just write it out, a cross product. So what does uh, the cross product mean? Well, product indicates what? Multiplication and cross basically means, you know, we're kind of crossing like so. So when you have a proportion, i.e. two equal fractions, the cross products are equal. So in other words, if I multiply this way, two times four, let me write it like so, two times four, this is gonna be equal to one times eight. And of course, we can see that two times four is eight, and one times eight is eight, so eight is equal to eight. All right, so when you have a proportion, the cross product is equal. And here, we can use that fact to solve this equation or solve this proportion, okay? So this is uh, an algebraic equation. You could also define this as a rational equation, and those are equations uh, that uh, basically um, have fractions. This is a big topic, but uh, you know, I really want you to hone in on using the cross product when you see an equation, again, with uh, two equal fractions. Okay, so here we can use the cross product to solve this equation. And if you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand. Well, go ahead and pause the video and give this a try. And I'm gonna go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so here is our problem. And let's use the cross product. So that means I'm gonna take this seven, I'm gonna multiply it by x plus one, and then I'll take this 21 right here and I'm gonna multiply it uh, by two. So this would be one side of the equation and this would be another side of the equation. Okay, so basically again, uh, we are cross multiplying the cross product. So we cleared the fraction. So we have seven times X plus one is equal to 21 times two. All right, now at this uh, stage of the game, right, or the equation, uh, how do you think I'm doing? Are you saying, okay, Mr. Two Math Man, I understand what you're doing. You're doing this uh, cross product uh, thing and uh, let's go ahead and finish up the algebra here. Now, if you have any problem with what I'm doing, Go ahead and put it into the comment section. Of course, I'll tell you exactly what's going on here, but let's finish up this problem. All right, so remember we just did the uh, cross product, seven times X plus one, that's gonna be equal to 21 times two. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the steps. All right, so seven times X plus one, I'm gonna have seven times X, so that's seven X plus one is equal to 21 times two, 42. So I want to get all my variables on the left and all my numbers on the right. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides of the equation. I get 7x is equal to 41. Now to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 7. And I get x is equal to 41 over 7. All right, now if you did this well, you're probably pretty upset because you're saying, hey, Mr. You to math man, uh, this is exactly what I did. And I chose that answer, but you're saying that the correct answer is not this answer, but you just did the problem using a cross product. What gives, what's going on here? Well, I made an error, okay, and I purposely did this. Where was the mistake? Well, if you're saying, well, this is the mistake right here, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you didn't do this right. Well, you're absolutely correct, okay? So if you're confused, stick with me because I'm gonna show you this very common mistake. But uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Now, I definitely wouldn't stop this lovely math video if I didn't need your help. This is critically important uh, for me to reach as many people as I possibly can, all right? So YouTube really does look at these things. Of course, you know, I'm pretty sure all of us watch YouTube videos, including myself, and people say, hey, subscribe to my channel because it's that important. Now, my goal is to reach as many people as I possibly can and to help them with math. So that's why I do ask for your support because it allows me to kind of grow my virtual classroom. And if you're going to subscribe, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. And if you need help with anything math, from basic math to more advanced math, uh, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. And kind of what we're talking about here is basic algebra. So if you need help with proportions, rates, ratios, check out like my pre-algebra course, my algebra one course, or maybe even my math skills rebuild a course. But I have like 3,000 videos on my YouTube channel that you can kind of scour through. And I have a lot of problems on ratios, rates, and proportions. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this error and how to avoid it, and here it is. Now, a lot, a lot of times you're going to get problems in algebra that are kind of given to you like this, like 21 over x plus 1 is equal to 7 over 2, okay? But sometimes, all right, they're going, the problem is going to be given with parentheses, but not all the time, okay? If the problem has parentheses, well, that is fantastic because that's going to help a lot of you not make a very common mistake. But if the problem does not have parentheses, now I need to be very clear here, parentheses around what? Well, around any sums or differences. So if anything is being added together, like a variable like 2x uh, or subtracted 2x minus 7, uh, 3y plus 2, when you have expressions like this in algebra, you want to put parentheses around sums and differences because more often than not, you're going to be using the distributive property. And if you don't have these parentheses around these sums or differences, it's going to cause a lot of confusion. Okay, so you got to put parentheses around any of these sums or differences before you get going with the cross product. Okay, so uh, obviously I'm putting the parentheses in. Now I'm going to do the cross product, which is what? 7 times x plus 1 and 21 times 2. All right, so 21 times 2, that's pretty easy. That's 42. But now I have 7 times x plus 1, but the parentheses. So here, instead of just going 7x like I did uh, in the previous example, I have to use the distributive property. That's going to be 7x times 7, or 7x times this 1. Okay, and that's in contrast to what I did over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this error. And, uh, you know, I bring these errors up because after grading, you know, tens of thousands of uh, homework, tests, quiz exams through the years, you just see these trends. So someone could, you know, be so close to getting the problem right, but right here, we have 7 uh, times x plus 1, so someone just goes 7x, but they don't distribute the 7 to this 1, and of course that throws their entire answer off. All right, so now uh, from this point forward, if we're really talking about basic algebra, so it's 7 times x, so that's 7x, seven, 7 times this 1, that's 7, is equal to 21 times 2, which of course is 42. Now we could subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. We've got 7x is equal to 35, and to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 7. Let's go ahead and do that. So uh, 35 divided by 7, of course, is 5. So x is equal to 5. And uh, we can verify that by plugging it in because if this wasn't a multiple choice question, right? So let's go back up to the problem here. So let's suppose we didn't have a multiple choice question and uh, we, had, uh, we got our answer x is equal to 5. Well, you could just do a quick... Uh, you know, check of that if you have the time on a test or exam, plug that 5 in there and just see if it works out. And of course, it does. So if you have time uh, to check your equations or check your solutions in an equation, that is a great way to kind of verify, you know, whether in fact, you know, you solved the uh, problem correctly. So as I indicated in the beginning of this video, you know, if you have basic algebra skills, there's a lot of different ways to get the right answer to this problem. All right, but hopefully you learned a thing or two about uh, proportions. And if that's the case, go ahead and like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.